Thankfully, I can say tomorrow, Saturday, is the Royal Rumble. So tonight, today, whatever, when you watch this video before the Royal Rumble 2023, this is my triple shot, what I think will happen, what I want to happen, and my wild card pick for the Royal Rumble 2023. But before we get there, before we roll that open, let me tell you, if you click the link in the description below, it'll take you to my Etsy store where there are limited first printings of my 68 page graphic novel Everlasting Survivors, volume one, all day long. This is the Jeff Hicks cover. This is the Nick Crook cover. There were only ever 100 of these printed. There were only ever 50 of these printed. Get your first printing before they sell out. So, after the open, enjoy what I think will happen, what I want to happen, and my wild card pick for the 2023 Royal Rumble. When it comes to what I think will happen, for the first time in WWE history, I believe that Triple H has gotten the women's roster large enough that it, uh, the main roster itself has enough active women to fuel the entire 30-woman Royal Rumble match itself. Not needing to bring back legends, not needing to do call-ups from NXT, not needing to have surprise entrance from Impact Wrestling. I believe that, not only do I believe, I've actually do, uh, done the math, I've, I, I looked it up, and there are enough women actively on Raw and SmackDown to be the entire field. And here is how I would have them enter and subsequently exit the match if it was up to me, which, which it ain't, but you know... <laughs> This is what I think could happen, should happen, and will happen. What I think will happen is that the women's Royal Rumble match will begin with Becky Lynch getting a big pop, getting the, the, the top billing entrance, the, the full-on deal at number one. When she stands in the ring, we give the first big surprise of the night when number two's entrant is Bianca Belair. The crowd goes wild. The Raw Women's Champion comes out. Oh my goodness! What 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 is it? Is she planning on merging the the Raw and SmackDown Women's titles like Roman Reigns has done, like the Usos have done? Does Bianca Belair think that she is not just the EST but the the woman who should hold both titles, much like Becky Lynch herself has already done? Oh my goodness! So these two women go at it for the duration of time that it takes to get um, to the third entrant, and here is the other big shocker that I've got planned for the match. That is Charlotte Flair enters at number three, just like her daddy did when he won it in 1992. Charlotte Flair, the SmackDown Women's Champion, comes in right after Bianca Belair. I once again, keep running the storyline of, you know, are they going to merge the titles together? How is this going to work out? Oh my goodness, it's, it's just, it's crazy. Um, number four, I have Dakota Kai. Five, I have Emma. Six, I have Nikki Cross. Seven, Mia Yim. Eight, Tamina. Nine, her former tag team partner, Natalia. And number ten is B-Fab from Hit Row. Eleven, I have Zia Lee. Twelve, I have Sonya Deville. Thirteen, I have Liv Morgan. Fourteen, I have Ronda Rousey. Things really start to pick up when Ronda Rousey enters at fourteen. But you know, I'm gonna break down the eliminations after I break down the entrance. So, um, number 15 is Rhea Ripley. Judgment Day accompanies her to ringside because, you know, they're all a team, they're a cohesive unit, and it makes good common sense. Uh, EO Sky is out at 16. 17 is Shayna Baszler. Her and Ronda obviously team up a bunch. Uh, 18 is Dana Brooke. 19 is Carmella. 20 is Alexa Bliss. 21 is Shotzi uh, Blackheart. I'll just say Blackheart at 22 is uh, Valhalla, the former Sarah Logan. 23 is Zelina Vega. 24 is the returning Dewdrop. 25 is Candice LeRae. 26 is Lacey Evans. 27 is Bailey. She comes out super cocky because she knows 27 in the past has been the lucky number for the men. 
and the match in, in and of itself. 28 is the first ever Women's Royal Rumble match winner, that being Asuka. 29 is Tegan Knox, And 30 is Big Strong Raquel Rodriguez. Now that I've broken down how I think the women would, could, and should enter, let me break down how I think they should exit. And in by doing so, highlight the women that I'm going to... Um, well, highlight, <laughs> throughout the match via the elimination. So the first woman eliminated is Emma, who came out fifth. She's eliminated by Becky Lynch. Then Nikki Cross is eliminated by Charlotte. They basically are in a anything-you-can-do-I-can-do-better game. Natalia eliminates Tamina, but then Natalia subsequently gets eliminated by Charlotte. B-Fab is out, eliminated by Bianca Belair, who is out to prove that the the old guard of Becky and Charlotte are not the only ones who can go strong. Zia Lee is eliminated by uh, Ronda Rousey. Sonya Deville uh, is also eliminated by Ronda Rousey. Shayna Baszler is eliminated by Dakota Kai and Io Sky. Uh, they also team up to get rid of Ronda Rousey. However, Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler can't take the fact that they were eliminated by the tag team champions. They both re-enter the ring. Ronda eliminates Dakota, and Shayna eliminates Io. This is to help facilitate Ronda and Shayna going after the tag titles like they have said they want to do. Uh, moving on, Zia Lee is out by Bianca Belair. Uh, let me just go over this list real quick. Dana Brooke, uh, Liv Morgan, Valhalla, Shotzi Blackheart, Zelina Vega, Alexa Bliss, and Dewdrop, oh, along with Candice LeRae, are all eliminated by Rhea Ripley. Uh, Lacey Evans is out by Becky Lynch. Tegan Knox gets eliminated by Bianca Belair. A lot, uh, Alaska, <laughs> Asuka is eliminated by Bianca as well. Bailey is eliminated by Charlotte. Bianca is eliminated by Becky. Becky is eliminated by Charlotte. Raquel is eliminated by Charlotte. And Charlotte Flair gets eliminated last by the winner of the match, Rhea Ripley. From this point, you can take it multiple ways. Does Rhea want to win the Raw Women's title from Bianca Belair? Or does she want to go and prove that she is better than Charlotte, the woman who took the NXT title from her and, you know, subsequently did nothing with it? But uh, I think Rhea Ripley is on a hot streak, and if you take advantage of that, that's the best way to go. So that is what I think would, could, and should happen. But what I want to happen, what I've wanted for so long is for tag team wrestling to matter. And Triple H is a man who loves him some tag team wrestling, not unlike myself. Paul knows how to show respect to the tag team ranks. Right now there are a plethora of tag teams with tag team names that make sense being tag teams. I mean, I know it seems very simple, but you wouldn't believe how much that concept was uh, watered down by the, the old man in the past. So what I want to happen, and I don't care if it's announced, unannounced, it happens on the night, I think it'd be a great surprise if it happened on the night. You do a backstage segment between multiple teams getting into it and have, whether it's Triple H or Adam Pierce or whoever, say, we're going to settle this out in the ring. And so um, what I want is this to be done like the AEW $300,000 Three Kings Christmas Casino Trios Royale. What I mean by that is you have the whole team enter together and the team is not eliminated until the entire team is out. So it's a double elimination. So as long as one member of the team stays, the team still has the chance to uh, win the match. And so uh, as I was saying about that backstage scuffle type of thing, you can have the Usos uh, get into it with, uh, you know, multiple teams. Um and so much so that they can be braggadocious and 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 be so hyped <laughs> on themselves for holding both titles that they when they hear that this match is going down they go down to ringside and watch as this first ever match takes place but i would like sammy and solo to be standing at their side you know assuming that uh the current bloodlight iteration is still intact this is being recorded the before the 30th anniversary of Raw, and there's j every bit of a chance that 
the bloodline could change on that episode. But, as I was saying, I want 30 men in this match. I want 15 teams, and I want the, the whole team to enter together and them not to be eliminated until both members of the team's feet have hit the floor. So here's how I would do in order of entry. American Alpha, uh, so Chad Notice, would be entered first, followed by the Brawling Brutes of Butch and Holland. The third team is the New Day, Kofi and Xavier. Fourth, I want the Coffee Brothers. I know that uh, Mark teams with uh, Wolfgang, and they call themselves call themselves Gallus, but I just love the idea of Joe and Mark Coffee teaming together as the Coffee Brothers on the main roster. They big time, uh, they being the Coffee Brothers, Mark and Joe, give me big time vibes of the old days of Rick and Scott and, uh, you know, Booker T and Stevie Ray. I just, I love that old, you know, getting the brothers uh, on a dominant streak uh, in the tag team ring. So I would bring Mark and Joe Coffee up to the main roster as the Coffee Brothers and leave Wolfgang in NXT as a solo act. Anyway, number five is Hit Row, Top Dalla and Ashanti the Adonis. Six, the Good Brothers, Gallows and Anderson. Seven, Imperium, uh, Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser. Eight, the Viking Raiders, uh, Eric and Ivar. Nine, Legado del Fantasmo of Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro. Ten, Los Lotharios, uh, Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo. Eleven, uh, bring up the, the dyad of... Uh, Reed and Fowler. When they enter, I would have Joe Gacy and Ava Rain uh, of Schism with them, much how like I had Judgment Day come out with Rhea. Uh, Twelve is a reunited Hurt Business of Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. Uh, once again, you can have MVP come out with them, no problem. Uh, Thirteen, Pretty Deadly. Uh, f- Fourteen, Street Profits and the. 15th and final team, and as much as I don't want to do this, the winners of the first ever tag team Royal Rumble would be Jake Paul and Logan Paul, reason being is WWE love getting their mainstream press stuff, and so to give this to Jake and Logan Paul would just make sense for the WWE, but the big stories I'm telling, the biggest story I'm telling in the match is Chad Gable, who enters first with Otis, is the final man eliminated. He is the uh, tag team Royal Rumble Iron Man throughout the the event. And I don't know if this is possible, but one thing I really, really want is for Big E to do the New Day's entrance live and in person, his whole, you know, WWE Universe uh, spiel, just because I'd love to see the man, you know, back because he's been gone for so long. So... With what I think out of the way and what I want, what I really, really want out of the way, it's time to talk about my wild card pick. Something that I know is controversial and a little crazy because the first time it sucked hard. But I think with the proper execution, it will not suck this time around. Uh, Now, with two matches changing on the fly in the night, it might seem a little mm, Vince McMahon, but hey, you know, let's lean into the, the rumors and the innuendo, if you will, because what my wild card pick is for the Royal Rumble, the men's Royal Rumble match, the third one of the night, but again, what I'm doing is I'm making it totally different from the women's match, totally different from the tag match. My wild card pick is for the men's Royal Rumble match to bring back the 40-man Royal Rumble concept like they had with Alberto Darillo, but this time, execute it well, and how I'm going to begin the match is with main event Jey Uso. (laughs) One of the men who was out watching the tag team Royal Rumble. Um, And the number two entrant would be Drew McIntyre, followed by Sheamus. The fourth entrant is Sami Zayn. Fifth is Jimmy Uso. Sixth would be Ricochet. Seventh is Shinsuke Nakamura. Eighth entrant is Madcap Moss. Ninth entrant is Austin Theory. And the tenth entrant is Solo Sokoa. All but Roman Reigns from the Bloodline are in the the first ten entrants. But this is important. I'm breaking it down to uh, this section down because this is where the first big storyline of the... This match happens. So the, the 
that that first big storyline is Sammy helping Jimmy and Jay eliminate Drew, Sheamus, Mad Cat Moss, Na- Nakamura, uh, and Ricochet. Solo entering, and as he enters, Austin Theory rolls under the ring uh, the ropes because he's you know a cowardly heel who you know doesn't want to take on all of the bloodline. And once all of the bloodline are in the ring, that's when Solo Sokoa, and this is why <laughs> I said anything is possible. It may, this may have already occurred on the 30th anniversary, uh, or not 30th anniversary, but the 30-year celebration of Raw. But again, this is being recorded before that, so let's fingers crossed hope that my plan will work. And it's what I my wild card pick, so let's just go with it. Uh, like I said, Austin Theory rolls out. And all of the bloodline are in. Sammy's hugging everybody. He hugs Jimmy. He hugs Jay. He's ready. Everybody's ready. Solo Sokoa then takes the the kill shot, and he he, uh, kicks Sammy in the back of the head. The Usos are beating him down. Sammy's bloody at this point. Um, Austin Theory is laughing. He's having a good time. He's on the outside watching. When the number 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, music hits. It's Jinder Mahal. And as he comes through the the staging area, he gets attacked by Kevin Owens. He gets thrown into the barricade. Kevin Owens steals his spot, enters, and comes to make the save for Sammy, who, again, laid out, bloody, a mess. KO, you know, it's 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 basically three-on-one because Sammy can't really help Kevin because... Uh, but still, it's this is the moment where... And, and the, the crazy thing is Kevin has already had his match with Roman earlier tonight, so it ain't like he's coming in at peak health as it is. But, yeah, so that's the first big storyline of the first 10 entrants and, you know, going into the 11th. So the 12th, 12th entrant in my booking is Wolfgang from Gallus. Again, treating him as a solo act and not as a tag team with Mark, uh, uh, in a tag team with Mark Coffey. 13 is Apollo Crews, 14, Baron Corbin, who is accompanied by JBL, 15 is the big strong boy himself, Tyler Bate, 16 is Ilya Dragunov, 17 is the reappearance of Joe Gacy, who uh, still has schism, uh, schisms, Ava Rain come to the ringside with him, uh, 18 is X-Pac because he wants to get that, uh, that uh, Royal Rumble pop and trips his buddy, so why not do it? 20 is Bobby Lashley. Um, the the big storyline of this section of the match is just the sheer dominance of Bobby Lashley, his his uh, you know power on display. Uh, Theory is still a, a coward and hiding and and not not really doing much of anything. Uh, Ko and Sammy have already been or have been eliminated in this uh, second section. Because, you know, like I said, Kevin had already gone through a grueling match with Roman that he loses, and Sammy had a major assault. So, um, going into the third section, we've got The Miz at 21, Dexter Loomis following him out in 22, Karrion Cor- Cross at 23, 24 would be Elias, 25, Gunther, 26, Mustafa Ali, and 27, the man whose t-shirt I'm wearing, the man who loves to pay homage to the past, and uh, bring back tradition, that being Cody Rhodes coming out at the lucky number 27. Once again, like I said, Bailey already emphasized how important the number is, so the commentary team can put it over when Cody comes out at lucky number 27. 28 is Santos Escobar. 29 is uh, Damian Priest. And number 30 in this 40-man Royal Rumble match is Bill Goldberg performing his last contracted match with WWE, or so I will assume, because he has said that he has one more match on his contract, and let's just put him in here and do the dang thing. 31 is almost, 32 is uh, Aziz, taking away the commander gimmick because Apollo is no longer a Nigerian royalty character. But, you know, Aziz is big, and I want him to be in there uh, along with Priest and Bobby and Omos and Bill Goldberg. And number 33, Braun Breaker. 34, Dominic Mysterio. 35, Brock Lesnar. Another guy I want to be in the ring with Aziz and uh, Omos and Bill and all those folks. Uh, 36, Bronson Reed. 
another big boy. I want him to get that uh, that Keith Lee spot with Brock Lesnar before he gets eliminated, where Brock's like, oh, man, that's a big boy right there because Bronson Reed is. 37, uh, Braun Strowman, once again, big guy, big spot. Uh, 38 is Roderick Strong. He did a really good job in the 50-man Royal Rumble. Let's put him in this 41. And 39, John Cena at uh, with a, a big surprise in this entrant. But what he does is he puts Austin Theory back into the ring because, you know, John being all about the, the hustle and the loyalty and the respect, he's, he's like, let's respect this match. Uh, number 40, and the final entrant is Rey Mysterio because I want him to get that that big pop from this final spot that he didn't get when he was number 30 the year that they didn't put Brian in. And they gave the, the victory to Batista. So the final four in my mind are Cody Rhodes, John Cena, Austin Theory, and Karrion Cross. Theory should dump out Cena uh, as revenge for Cena putting him back in the ring. Uh, Rhodes should dump out Theory. The final two being Karrion Cross and Cody Rhodes. I think by doing it this way, you shouldn't have, or fingers crossed, nobody should be anti Cody winning because he's in there with, you know, a heel, that being Karrion Cross. And since Theory eliminated John Cena, you don't have the nostalgia for John leading to people picking him over Cody conceptually. I really want Rey Mysterio to finally hit Dominic because uh, when Rey enters, I want. Balor, Priest, and Dom to all be in there, and for Ray to, to, to get away from this three-on-one attack, he finally has to hit his son, which is further building toward a WrestleMania confrontation with the, between the two. I would love for Braun Breaker to hit Spear on Goldberg before he throws him out, giving uh, Braun Breaker a, a big uh, help from one of his idols, and as I, as I already alluded to, I want Omos, Aziz, Strowman, uh, Bronson Reed, Braun Breaker, all these big guys to have you know big hard hitting spots, showing off the the classic land of giants that WWE is. But like I said, in the end, the man who I believe should win this forty man Royal Rumble match is the man who was the first ever TNT champion and the first ever three-time TNT champion, that being Cody Rhodes, in an effort to prove to anybody whose contract comes up with AEW that WWE will treat you right. And so that's what I think will happen, what I want to happen in my wild card pick for the Royal Rumble 2023. I hope you enjoyed. Um, Come back Wednesday for the Wednesday Rewind. And, or come back Monday for Monday Movie Mayhem. Come back Wednesday for the Wednesday Rewind. And uh, check in next Friday for a uh, a new topic.